Praise the Lord, everybody. It's Sunday morning, and guess what? This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice. Come on, you got to get up and rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the grace, the mercy, and the favor of our God. We have a phenomenal worship experience set up for you. As a matter of fact, I have someone bringing the word today that's going to bless you tremendously. I promise you, you gonna, you're going to want to know about these shoes and how you're supposed to function and operate in the presence of God. Trust me, this word is just for you. Don't you move. Get ready to have praise and worship. And then right after that, we'll jump into the word. God is great and he is greatly to be praised. Come on, it's praise and worship. It says in John 12 and 32, Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up above the earth, I will draw all men, draw all people to me. Is there anybody in here that wants Jesus to be lifted? I need you to take 30 seconds and just lift your hands and while your hands are up open your mouth and lift him come on let him hear that sound that sound that sound that sound come on hands up hearts open wide as the sky we lift you high we lift you high hands up hearts open wide as we cry god we lift your name high everybody say hands up hearts open wide as the sky declare we lift your name we lift you high we lift you high we lift you high hands up, hands up hearts open wide God, we lift your name. We lift your name high. You gotta say it again. Hands up, do it. Hands up, hearts open wide as the sky. Say we lift you high. We lift you high. God, we lift you. We lift you high. Hands up, hearts open. Somebody declare that say let all let all the other things fade away. Till you till there's only till you. There's only let, all, let all the other, other names fade away. So say Jesus take your place. Jesus take your place. Jesus take your place. Distraction, whatever the enemy may try to present, let it fade. Let all the other let things fade. fade away. Till there's a till there's a oh. let all the other things fade away. Jesus, take your Jesus, way. take your Jesus, take your Jesus, take your Come on, let's say, let all let all the other things fade away. That's our desire.
all the other names fade away. Let all the other names fade. You say. Let all. Say Jesus take. Jesus take. One more time. Everybody lift your hands. Say, let all, let all the other names fade away. Let cancer fade away. Let all the other names fade away. Let every struggle, let issue, let poverty fade away. Let all the other names fade away. Let high blood pressure fade away. Sickle cell, let it fade away. Depression fade away, let suicide fade away, let all the other names fade away, let depression, let anger and abuse fade away, let all the other names fade away, till there's only, till there's only let, all. let all the other names fade away, now say Jesus take, Jesus take your Jesus take your This week, our GYA Give Yourself Away Outreach recognizes June as Alzheimer's Awareness Month. That's why we've partnered with Meadowbrook Manor, a long-term care facility that continues to meet the needs of our seniors suffering from this disease, who have also been separated from family and usual daily activities due to COVID-19. Because of your generosity, nearly 1,000 crossword puzzles, coloring books, crayons, and Bibles met the needs of the entire 250-plus facility, along with 300 letters to those seniors reminding them of the unconditional love of Christ. Because of your generosity, we can continue to make a difference, and giving has been made simple. Text Get the Victory, Get the Victory BC, or Get the Victory VC to 77977. Select the giving link. Enter the amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, you can enter your payment details. Then simply confirm your gift. You can also cash app Get the Victory by downloading the app in the Apple or Google Play Store. Thank you for being the church. Well, I hope you're ready for the word of God. Pastor Ray from our church. I'm super excited that God has armed us with an arsenal of members of the body of Christ and members of the clergy that love God. Trust me, there are clergy and then there are the clergy that love God. This brother loves God and God has graced him tremendously for such a time as this to deliver the word of God. And I know his mama is watching. Hey, ma your favorite son here <laughs> and his brother is watching so I love you guys and I know that you're praying but I need the world praying for him now that God would use him in this moment to speak life into our dead situations say Lord come on say it with me say Lord no I need you to say it like you mean it say Lord bless this preacher I'm ready to receive a word from you in Jesus name no, put a seal on it. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Here's the word. Victory. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are so excited to have you join us again this morning. Thank you so much. We are so thankful to God for the opportunity to minister and to witness to you. God is so good. Let's just give God a hand clap for celebration right now, right wherever you are. Celebrate God and his goodness. Isn't God good? God is so, so very good to keep us the way he's been keeping us. I'm Pastor Ray King, and I'm so excited and so thankful to have an opportunity this morning to come and bring the word. I thank the angel of this house, Pastor Smokey Norfolk and First Lady for the opportunity, never taking that for granted. We are excited. I'm excited. And I just believe and trust God is going to help us to bring the word this morning. So tune in and be prepared. Now is the time for the word to come through. The scripture reading for today it comes from John 5, 23, and it reads as such. I'll give you a second to get it. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And it reads, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. May God add a blessing to the word that he's already blessed. For those who are hearing, may he bless you, may he touch you in ways that only God can touch you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to bring the word and we just honor you and we love you. And God, we know that you're going to pour out a special blessing for everyone who is listening to your word today. God, as I decrease, we believe and trust that you're going to increase and we celebrate you, God. And we thank you, God. And we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. I'm so excited and so thankful. I thank you. Pastor Norfolk and First Lady for this opportunity to be able to bring the word to you today. God is so good. Every single opportunity we have to worship him and to praise him, we always want to celebrate and we always want to lead off with thanksgiving. I'm thankful because I know that God is a just God and he will make a way out of no way. I know some of us feel like we've been in quarantine for a minute and wondering when and how things are going to change, but just trust and know that God is with you. He is the God that is faithful and he'll bring you through. He'll never, ever leave you or never forsake you. I was asking God, you know, what is it, Lord, that we could talk about today? What is the, the, the thing that you want to share with the people? And God was talking to me and showing me, and the title of what I want to talk to you about today is called Take Off Your Shoes. God told me clear this day, take off your shoes. And so immediately I grabbed my, my, my tablet and I began to search for different things to try to reference what God was saying. And as I researched it, I began to run into an area that talked about different cultures and what shoes meant in different cultures. And, and one thing that stood out to me more than anything, in the Japanese culture, they have a thing that, that references taking off your shoes. And what I mean by that is, when you walk into one of their homes, they have a split house where going downstairs and going upstairs represents two different things. And you wear different types of shoes depending on which area you're going to. The door is not what they use to separate inside and outside. It's the type of shoes that you wear. For example, when you enter into a person's home, you're asked to take off your shoes. You take off your shoes and you put on what they give you is slippers. You wear those slippers to the remainder of the home. If you get ready to leave the home, then you take off the slippers and put back on your shoes. It's also in that culture, they feel as if you come to their home, you should wear socks. But people often bring a fresh pair of clean socks because it's disrespectful to come into someone's home without socks. Because barefoot signalizes to that person that you don't really honor them or respect them. As I read that, I said, well, Lord, it's pretty interesting, but what exactly can I use when it comes to taking off your shoes that applies to the Christian faith? Or how in the Bible can I reference what you're talking about when it comes to taking off your shoes? God quickly took me to Deuteronomy 25. And in Deuteronomy, it talks about brothers. And, and I thought this was very interesting. It says, if two brothers are living together and one dies without a seed, if the person who dies it has a wife and they don't have a child, then that brother is expected to marry the brother's wife who had died. So if the brother had died and his wife was now a widow, the brother who was the firstborn is expected to marry her. And after they marry, if she has a child, the firstborn son is to take the last name or the name of the brother who died. That way they could push on the bloodline. Now, where am I going with this and how does this connect to take off your shoes? Well, it says if that brother refuses to marry the sister of his deceased brother, she must take him before the elders. When she takes him before the elders, if that brother still refuses to comply with custom of the land in Israel, then she is to walk up to him in front of the elders. She is to spit in his face take off his shoe, and she is to acknowledge that he's not worthy to be called a man. What I'm trying to say to you is that taking off the shoes represents something in Old Testament times, in other cultures, and it's still to this day, even in the New Testament, as I go on through the scriptures, you're going to see that taking off your shoes is about honoring, referencing, and showing humility, that God expects us to have a certain type of posture because God is God, and we have to know how, when to take off our shoes. This leads me on down to Moses, a perfect example of taking off your shoes. Exodus 3, 1 through 3, starts off just like this. It says, now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. 
the priest of Midian, he led the flock to the other side. So in other words, he took the flock to the other side of the land to Mount Hor. This was God's place. He took the flock over there, and as he was over there, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flames of fire. And it says, the flames of fire were inside of a bush. And inside of that bush, Moses saw it, and he was wondering to himself, why is this bush burning, but not ever, it's catching on fire, but it's not burning up. It's burning, but it's not tearing down. It's just there. Now, like most people, he was curious. So Moses began to walk over to the bush. Now, this right here, this particular area, represents how we are when God is performing a miracle and we don't understand what's going on. Sometimes it's best just to be still when God is doing something. Sometimes it's best to just be still when God is doing something. Whenever God's in operation and God is trying to bring about a miracle, either it's for you or for somebody else, sometimes it's good just to stand still and look. You don't always have to go over and touch. You don't always have to go over and and investigate. See, there's a prereq when it comes to understanding what God is doing. It's called honor. See, honor always comes before your understanding. When you dishonor God, you cannot expect to understand. But when you honor God, what it does, it moves you out of position of what God is doing so that you don't get in the way of his hands. If God needed you in the kitchen when he was preparing your miracle, he would have called you by your name. If God doesn't call your name, then it's best for you to stand back and wait on God. There's a scripture, you know, that talks about that. It says, be still and know that I am God. But just like most of us, Moses wants to go and investigate. You see it all the time. People going down the highway, car, something may have happened. Instead of the person going on about their business, what do they do? What do we do? We stop, we look, we hold up traffic because our curiosity always wants to know what's going on. We are curious people, but it's not always the best thing for us to do. And as Moses began to walk over towards the burning bush, you hear the Lord call his name. Moses! Moses, he says, Moses says, here I am, Lord, here I am. He says, stop, you, Moses, stop. See, God often tries to slow us down sometimes, but we don't always hear him. You pray for something, you ask God for something, but sure enough, as God is entertaining or listening to you and beginning to bring that thing to pass, you touch it, you put your hands on it, you want to fix it, you want to help him out, you want to show him how to do it, you want to keep praying like he's not doing it, and when he calls your name, sometimes you're so caught up in yourself, you don't hear him, you don't understand him, and you keep on doing what you're doing. But thanks be to God, he heard the Lord's voice, and he says, do not come any closer, God said, but take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Now, I want you to understand something here. God will call your name. He did not identify or even wonder why Moses was going where he was going. God had a whole different agenda going on. And what Moses was about to do, he was about to get himself destroyed because this is holy ground. And you have to honor God before you get an understanding. Remember, the prereq to understanding is to always honor God. And if you don't honor God, how can you expect to understand? He told him, Moses, stop. Then he said, I am the God, your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And this Moses, and when he heard it, at this Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. See, God is pure. He's divine. And when he's carrying out a miracle, you have to understand God is at work and you need to be still. When God tells you to take off your shoes, he's trying to get you to change your posture. He's trying to say, reverence me, understand me. Before you ever understand what I'm doing, you must first First, understand how to honor me, how to respect me, how to let me be who I am. God doesn't call you because he doesn't need you. What he wants you to do is benefit from what he's doing, not assist him on how to do it. We have to understand that God is God. The Bible says, let God be the truth and every man be a lie. Let God do what God is doing. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying because they're slave drivers, because of the, what they are doing. They are oppressed. Now, I want to put a pen in here. I want to say something to anybody who ever thought that racism or, or thought that slavery was something that the Bible was pushing or saying was okay. This scripture right here tears that down. God is not for anyone being oppressed or anything being oppressed. God says right here, because of the oppression, because of the slave driver, I have heard and I have come down to rescue them. Now, this is 
is not just for the spirit of the slave driver, but also for the person who has been released, the person who was a former slave. That mindset is also for that person, too, because as you know, for 40 years, even though Egypt had released the Israelites for 40 years, there was still some slave mentality people walking around the mountain. That's why they had to go 40 years around the mountain, because they didn't quite have a free mindset, because they were refusing to take off their shoes. And what happens is everyone who didn't take off their shoes, and I mean this in a paraphrased way, not literally in the desert, but everyone who had a mindset of not changing their posture, not taking off their shoes, they died in the desert, and God took the other ones who were willing to take off their shoes. Let me tell you something. It's the worst thing you can do is die with your shoes on. God is always asking and giving us ideas and giving us an opportunity to take off our shoes. When you take off your shoes, you're referencing God. You're saying, I love you, God. You're saying, I am willing to change my posture, change my direction, repent of what I'm doing. I hear you, Lord. One thing about Moses, he was curious, but when God called his name, he heard him. When God calls your name, do you hear him? Are you listening? Are you willing to change your posture? What in your life is God saying to you when he says, take off your shoes? A lot of times we are guilty of just being so caught up in what we want, what we desire, and we refuse sometimes to take off our shoes. God is saying, this is not the time for that. I want to bring this into your life. Well, Lord, I don't understand. Therefore, I won't take off my shoes. This is the time and the hour for us all to understand to take off our shoes. And it moves on down even deeper to John 5, 13 through 15. This story is another story of taking off your shoes. Listen to this. I'm talking about the story of Joshua. Now, Joshua, let me give you the backstory of Joshua. Now, Joshua is the one who the Lord said, keep the book of the law on your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. See, Joshua was a warrior. He was a come out and get you type person. He was a person that would just take off and go after it. He was known for being a trailblazer and a fighter. But as you know, without God, you are nothing. I don't care what you are skill-wise, without the Lord thy God, there's nothing you can accomplish for God. Everything you do will be for self. You must have God. This is what God is showing us now as we sit and as we wonder, why are we sitting in these homes? What can we be doing? You can be learning what God is trying to show you about yourself. You can be learning how to keep your shoes off. Better yet, learning how to take your shoes off. The Bible goes on and talks about, now I'm going to tell you about this Joshua a little bit more first. This is the Joshua. This is the Joshua that won 13 battles. This is the Joshua that killed 31 kings. This Joshua, this is the Joshua who the Lord kept saying be very, very courageous. Unlike Moses, Moses who had to start from scratch, God told him something, told him what he wanted to do. Joshua had an opportunity to see what it looked like before we did it. Always be thankful for those who God puts you under so you can watch what they do because it's for a reason. You're never put somewhere with somebody doing something where you don't understand. God puts you there to teach you how and what it looks like. God is grooming you, showing you, teaching you. Take and be thankful for what God is doing in your life. Some of you right now at home are wondering why you can't be the head of this and the head of that because God got you under somebody to show you something. That way when your turn comes and your time comes, you'll know what to do with it. It goes on, it talks about in John 5, 13 through 15, it says, and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes Look and behold, a man stood opposite of him with a sword drawn by his hand. And Joshua went to him and he said, are you for us or for our adversaries? Now, let me point out something to you right here. In our own minds, we always have a left and a right, a one and a two, or up and a down, because we are, we are finite. We, we don't seem to understand that there's always more than one thing going on. Glass is half full, half empty. We don't understand sometimes it's just enough. God is more than what we need, and we break things down into categories in the physical, but God always has a deeper revelation in the spiritual. The angel who was standing before him, he said, no. And let me tell you what that no means. That no is not answering Joshua's question. That no is that third thing in the room that says no. Now, if you don't understand what I mean by no, let me give an example. I remember when I came in the room when I was a little bitty boy, and I went into the kitchen, and my mom was in the den room, and I said, hey, Ma, I want to know, can I have what's going on in this kitchen? Like, can I have my brother's and my dad's um, piece of pie, or do I need to eat my cherry pie for later? And so I asked her a question that she needed to give me answers to. It was not a question where she said no. It was one or the other. Which one? It wasn't a can I have it. It was which one do I eat? My mama said no. 
Now, in the South, when you hear a no, it's not one of those, well, let me uh, try again. It's a no, be still, something ain't right. So she said no, not knowing that what she was saying was the mud on your feet inside my kitchen. Don't you move another step forward. That no meant get out my kitchen with those dirty shoes. She could care less about what I was asking. What she was saying was I was out of order for coming to her house. Dirty shoes, muddy in her kitchen. See, that no that God gives us sometimes, it's a wake you up. It's not a no answering your question. It's a no to get you in the right posture. It's for you to take off your shoes. Say, I had to take off my shoes. Then I could ask about that cake or that pie. But see, that no man don't ask me about that cake or that pie. You understand? God will give you a no sometimes to recalibrate you, to realign you, to show you that you are not, you're not the one in control, to let you know that the battle is not yours, it's his, and that you're on his chessboard and he's not on yours. Sometimes we take God and make him a play or a piece on our board, but God is really saying, you're on my board. And so what goes on, he says now, as he told him no and did not answer his question at first, that no struck Joshua in a way where he bowed down, humbled himself. Because see, that no resonates to people. In the South, it means when you're in trouble and your mom and your dad tells you no, they often will follow it up if you keep doing it with a, come here little boy, or come here little girl. And when you hear a little boy, a little girl from your parents, that's one step from go to that tree and get me that switch. That does something to you when you hear a little boy, a little girl. My mama walk in the kitchen right now, if I'm out of a come here little boy, because she's resetting me and recalibrating me, letting me know, don't get too grown for your britches. Well, this is kind of what the angel was saying. He said, no. In other words, you need to recalibrate and know who I am. He says, no, but as the commander of the Lord's army, I now have come. Because once again, this is not God on Joshua's chessboard. This is Joshua on God's chessboard. And God is the one fighting the battle. The Bible says the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. And so instead of saying, are you for them or for us? The commander was saying, I'm here for God. Who are you for? That's what he was saying to him. In other words, before you talk to me, change your posture. And so the next thing he says, as Joshua fell on his face and began to worship him, he says, what does the Lord say to his servant? He changed his posture, and then he began to ask questions relevant to a posture change. So the beginning of the question was not asking a question in reference to a posture. It was like, are you going to come at me so I can take you out? That's what he was saying. But this time he's saying, what is it that I shall do? See, sometimes you got to change your posture, and that comes with taking off your shoes. What in your life is this message telling you that you need to take your shoes off for? Is it that job? Is it, is it that relationship? What is it that you are so such and much about that God wants you to know today it's time for you to take off your shoes? He says, take off your shoes for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. He was changing his posture. All that that you're asking about means absolutely nothing if you come up here in the wrong posture. In other words, he didn't want to tell Joshua, listen here, if you don't change your posture, it won't be about the adversary, it's going to be about you. You know, the worst thing you can do, let me make it plain for you, the worst thing you can do when you're a kid is get a whooping at your own birthday party. You ever been at a birthday party and, and see somebody get a whooping or you got a whooping? It's nothing wrong, it's nothing worse when having to clean your face up when you got a bunch of kids, your friends, out there playing around on your toys at your party. What am I saying? What do you mean, Pastor? What I'm saying is, it's a horrible thing for God to send you some help. And when the help comes, it has to take you out because you're out of order. You need to take off your shoes. That's what he was saying. Take off your shoes. You know, I was thinking the other day, I got about my uh, grandmother... And um, my father at the time was sitting there and he was um, at a table. My grandmother's 105 and my father, my dad and my father, we don't do stepdad in my house. So it's, this was my father. And my father was, uh, was with my grandmother. She's 105 and she was there eating. She was eating some chicken and, and just kind of, you know, relaxing. And she said, I want another piece of chicken. And my um, dad, or my father rather, says, you don't need any more chicken. You haven't eaten what's on your plate. I'm not going to get another piece of chicken. And out of nowhere, as I'm sitting there, my grandmother, who's 105, and my dad's like, my father's like 68, 69, she said, babies, babies don't talk back to, to uh, grown-ups. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, 
babies, he's not, he's 69 years old. She said, babies don't talk back. I've been eating chicken before you was born. Now, let me tell you something about born versus bone. When an elder say the word bone in the same tone as she said that, what she really was saying was, you better take off your shoes. You better recognize who you're talking to. You better readjust and recalibrate because I'm grown. He's 69, but she's 105. So she said, I was eating chicken before you was born, baby. And so he said, yes, ma'am, got up and went and got her some more chicken. Now, you know I wanted to laugh, right, but I had to keep it to myself. What I'm trying to show you is that when God is speaking, when he's trying to show you something, when he's recalibrating you, he's always trying to get you a message to know that if you don't come to him in the right position, in the right place, you will, you will take yourself out for the count. It's all about being willing to humble yourself down, reference God, and be humble. Let him know that you respect him. Give him the honor that he deserves. And that's what the angel was showing Joshua. As much as he has won and fight and fought, as much as he has won and fought, God was showing him, you need to honor me. This is the same Joshua that went down in the valley while Moses held his arms up high on the mountain because God was showing not only Joshua and Moses, but he was letting Joshua know that don't try to be courageous without me. You're going to always need God, and somebody needs to hear that right now. You may have the answers logistically. You may be the smartest one in the room, but don't try to make it to the finish line without God. At some point, everybody in this life is going to have to take off their shoes. God is no respecter person, but I promise you, before you exit out of here, you're going to have to take off your shoes. That takes me on to John 13. And John 13 talks about, let me give you the backstory of what's going on. Jesus has come to his final hour, and it's time now for him to return to the Lord. He knows that God sent me, and back to God I'm going to go. He understood that, and he knew that now was the time for me to be able to show them exactly how and what needs to be done. He knew that the people around him loved him, but he also knew that there was a betrayer in the room. He knew that Judas had already been pricked by the enemy and already had confirmed in his heart what he was going to do to him. Yet, even in that hour, he still set out to do what he was about to do. And it says in verse 4, he rose up from the supper, from the supper and laid aside his garments. He took a towel and he girded himself. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel in which he had been girded with. Then he came to Simon Peter. Oh, boy, here we go. He came to Simon. Now, Simon, you know Simon. Simon is the ear topping off. I don't know who the Lord is. Uh, you the son of the Christ. He, he all those things in a bag of chips. That's who Simon is. Simon Peter. And Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? What he was saying was, Lord, you're not washing my feet. In other words, he was saying, no, you are God. And you are not washing my feet. Another sign of not understanding, not knowing how to honor. And when you honor, it removes you out the way of God. And when you remove, God can do what he's doing. And after he's doing, he's done what he needs to do. In honor, it removes you from getting in the way of what God is doing. And after he's done what he's going to do, then you understand on the other side what he had done. But oftentimes, we want to know on this side what you're doing. Nothing's more aggravating to me than when my son asks me what I'm doing and it's grown folks' business. It's nothing more aggravating when somebody's trying to press you for something God told you not to tell. You have to let God be God and get out the way. So what happens is he's sitting there telling Jesus, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus asked him, answered to him. He says, what I'm doing, you do not understand. He says, but you will know after this. Remember, honor is the prereq to understanding. When you honor God, it moves you out the way. God does what he's going to do. And then now you understand. So he says, after this, you will know and then you will understand. See, there is something about understanding God before. I don't know it's in our psyche. We must have all the answers. But God's not a God that's going to be questioned. Sometimes God won't even answer you. He'll just do it. And you've got to be okay with that. That's why he's God. And it says that Peter said to him, you shall not ever wash my feet. And then Jesus said, if I do not wash you, you will have no part with me. In other words, if you do not let me honor you, then you will have no part, nor will you understand how to honor others. If you do not allow me to do what I've been sent here to do, 
my assignment is, then you will not be able to do your assignment. The prereq to Peter being Peter was Jesus being Jesus. And I want to tell you the prereq to you being who God has made you to be is allowing God to be who he needs to be in your life. And a lot of us deny God because we don't understand God. Somebody gave us some idea that God is this God that does this, that does that. You have to go and see who God is for yourself. No one can tell you who God is. You have an opportunity to see who he is for yourself, but you got to be willing first to take off your shoes. And then it goes on to say is that after he told him that, Simon says, not just my feet, my hands, my head, everything. Watch everything, Lord. Watch it all. <laughs> he wanted God to watch everything. He still didn't understand what Jesus was saying. Jesus said, and I'm going to paraphrase this, he said, you're already clean, but allowing me to wash your feet now teaches you how to do the same thing to others. It's one of you in the room who's not clean. And again, he knew it was Judas. He said, it's Judas who's not clean, but he didn't call his name, but he knew in Judas' heart he'd already betrayed him. But he was trying to get him to understand an illustration. He says that a servant is always willing, never greater than his master, or the one who was sent is never greater than the one who sent him. He wants you to know that you got to be willing to take off your shoes. And so unless they were willing to humble down and posture and let God be God, there would not be any inheritance for them in the kingdom of God. In other words, you have to keep your shoes off in order to receive what God is trying to show you. Let me make it plain for you, real plain. There was a young lady, and she had met this young man. And she was on the way to go get something to eat. And, and they had, ne- now, had been dating for two or three months, and she decided, he decided to invite her over to dinner. She had never been over there before, so she decided to go over. So she drove over to his house, and he was preparing dinner, and she got out of the car, and she went inside, and, and, and you know, the food smelled good, and she was so excited because they really did like each other, and this was another step to see if she was, he was the one. And the whole time on the way over there, she kept asking God, please, Lord, please, Lord, I'm tired. Let me know this is the one. Give me a sign. Show me if he's the one. Let me know, God, because I'm tired. I want the right relationship like a lot of us do. We say, God, give me a sign. Give me a signal. I need to know if this is the right job, if this is the right person, if this is the right investment. We do that all the time because we can't seem to understand why we're not hearing from God as fast as we want to. So she gets over to the house. She goes inside. The man opens up the door, goes back to the kitchen. He speaks the food. And he said, oh, I'm so glad to see you. He said, um, you can take off your shoes right there by the door and come on in here. The food is just about ready. She stops at the door and she looks down. She takes off her boots and then she realizes, uh-oh, well, what's the problem? Now, he doesn't know he's in the kitchen. She didn't want to take off her shoes because she had a hole in her sock. Now, I know that sounds funny, right? Okay, right. I know, I know. But see, this is serious because this is a young lady. She got a hole in her sock. She didn't know she was going to have to take off her shoes. And she doesn't want him to see the hole in her sock. And she knows any minute now, dinner's going to be on the table. So he's bringing the tape, plates to the table, putting them on the table. And she's still at the door playing around. He yells in there, hey, you know, everything okay? She says, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then she takes, you know how you do when you got a hole in your sock, right? You try to tuck it under your foot. Yeah, uh, I'm, oh, I'm the only one. You tuck that hole under your shoe, under your foot. And she tried to drag her feet to the room. And then she realized she couldn't hide that hole. That hole kept showing up. So she stopped. She went back to the door. And he started putting things on the, on the table. And he's like, okay, I'm ready. And so he looks around the corner. And, and I know I'm a host. She's standing there. And then she decides to just to make a break. Now, you're thinking what I'm thinking. Just take off the sock. You're going to be all right. Oh, forgot to tell you. Her toes wasn't done. Ladies, I know you know what I'm talking about. I don't really know, because, but I know you know what I'm talking about. She didn't want to take off the sock because she didn't get her feet done. Now, you may be laughing and think this is funny, but this is no joke if you're that lady. So she takes off her socks, and she goes over to the table, and she's nervous and embarrassed. She's, she's nervous. She gets over there. The man says, stop. She stops her. She says, oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. He says, looks her from head to toe. He said, I'm so thankful you can. You are the most beautiful person I've had seen in so long. Oh, my gosh. We're going to have a great, great dinner. Sticks out his hand. They say grace. She sits down. Now, while they're eating and having a great time, he gets up and realizes there's nothing to drink and goes to get something to drink. As soon as he leaves, the Lord speaks to her and says, now that I have shown him your vulnerability, now that I've answered his question, if you are the right one, you can rest assured, Ruth, because it's only when you're vulnerable, Ruth, that Boaz will recognize you. Because Boaz has an assignment, Ruth, 
In other words, what God is trying to tell you at home is that until you're willing to take off your shoes, until you're willing to be vulnerable, a lot of the things you're asking God for, you will never, ever receive or you'll never, ever see it. See, the shoes represented being honorable to the person who was lording over the land. That's what landlord means. See, the man was the landlord over his house. The rules were take off your shoes. The socks represents what you're not willing to be vulnerable about. That thing, whatever that thing is that you're not willing to release, that thing that you keep hiding from, whatever is your record, whatever it is, the things you did in your past, is it you had a child out of wedlock, whatever that thing is, it's time for you to take off your shoes. If you've been a liar in the past, time for you to take off your shoes. If you were an adulterer, it's time for you to take off your shoes. If you're hiding from somebody, it's time for you to take off your shoes. If you was fired in a disgrace, situation. It's time for you to take off your shoes. Domestic violence. It's time for you to take off your shoes. Dad be dad. It's time for you to take off your shoes. This grown up mama. It's time for you to take off your shoes. God is saying everybody A to Z it's time for you to take off your shoes. God is ready for you to come on home. Don't let the devil continue to have you upset, misguided. Don't let him do what he's been doing. The worst thing you can do again on this side of heaven is to die with your shoes still on. Now I'm praying and believing for everybody who's heard the sound of my voice that taking off your shoes has resonated to you. I'm believing and trusting that God was saying something to you this time, this day. He's trying to get your attention. He's trying to let you know that no more do you have to fear or wonder if God loves you. He loves you enough because guess what? He was willing to get down on his knees and wash the feet of the disciples before he got nailed to the cross. That's how much God loves you. This is your time. And this is your hour. It's time for you to take off your shoes. If you need God, and if you don't know him, and you want to know him, be free today. Text the number at the bottom of the screen. That's the number to let us know that you are willing to give God your heart, your mind, and your soul. If you believe he died for your sins, and you believe he was resurrected, if you're willing to confess that, is it better yet? Repeat after me. Lord, I believe that you died for my sins. And I believe that you are resurrected again. And I believe, God, that you've called me today and you're asking me to take off my shoes. I'm willing, Lord. I'm ready, Lord, to take them off. If that's you, and if you confess that today and it was your first time, text the number at the bottom of the screen. If you're interested in becoming a member of Victory Cathedral and you're excited, text the bottom of the screen. Raise your hand. We're excited. We want you. And we're so thankful for the opportunity. As I leave today, I just want to remind you to take off your shoes. God bless. Well, like I told you, that word was amazing. It was timely and it was rhema. I am so hopeful that it ministered to you in a place that, that penetrated your heart and ultimately will shift and realign your mind to the mind of Christ. Thank you. Thank you for being the kind of people that makes pastoring so enjoyable. You have been faithful. You have been diligent. Your service, your sacrifice, and you have been okay remaining safe. There is no greater thing that is important as important to me in this season in that you are safe and that you are sound, not just in the word, but even in the midst of this world. We are in this world, even though we're not of this world. And so we move and we function and we operate in the spirit of wisdom. And I pray that this word will push you into a posture of relationship with God and wisdom among man. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for listening and for doing this word. But more importantly, thank you for being the church. Pay attention to these announcements. Don't move. Watch these announcements because they're just for you. And then we'll dismiss together. God bless you. God, we thank you for what you've done and we thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Thanks for joining us online at Victory. We hope today's message brought you hope, healing, and empowerment. If this is your first time joining us or you would like to connect with us in a greater way, text CONNECT to 38470. You can also visit our website for more information at getthevictory.org. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for daily inspiration and encouragement. You've heard how your giving makes a difference, and Victory has made giving simple. Text your gift by sending Get the Victory, Get the Victory BC, or Get the Victory VC to 77977. Select the giving link. Enter the amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, you can enter your payment details. Then simply confirm your gift. You can also cash app Get the Victory by downloading the app in the Apple or Google Play Store. iConnect is Victory's online community, giving Victory Walkers an improved way to communicate and stay connected. Set up your iConnect personal profile to update you and your family's contact information. See upcoming events on the church calendar. Manage your giving. Let us know about your gifts and interests. Sign up for GYA serving opportunities and more. Go to getthevictory.org and click on iConnect to stay connected today. Join us for daily prayer Monday through Saturday at 12 noon and 6 p.m. You can join the call by dialing 480-297-0773. The access code is 111-0089-POUND. Again, that's 480-297-0773. And the access code is 111-0089-POUND. The LEAD Institute Bible Study has new online classes. These six-week classes will take place via Zoom starting Wednesday, June 17th at 7 p.m. Classes include The New You, a class to guide you on a journey through the key beliefs, practices, and virtues of the Christian faith, and How to Study the Bible, exploring various methods for studying the Bible from the importance of context, how to do character studies, how to utilize biblical resources, and more. Space is limited, so go to getthevictory.org to register today. Interested in becoming a homeowner? Join us June 9th through June 30th for Victory's Home Ownership Courses. These four-week online Zoom sessions cover topics from the advantages of home ownership, the home buying process, how to obtain financing, budgets, credit reports, reducing debt, and more. For more information, go to getthevictory.org. Hey parents, did you know we send weekly resources to keep your students spiritually engaged? Get video, praise and worship, lessons, activities and devotionals right to your inbox for students pre-K through the 12th grade. Go to getthevictory.org to sign up today. If you're a student 8th through the 12th grade, we've got something just for you. Join us every Wednesday via Zoom at 6 p.m. for real and relevant discussions with a biblical perspective. To get the passcode to join us weekly, you or your parents can go to getthevictory.org to sign up today. Until next week, Victory Walkers, keep walking in victory and remember to be the church.